Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. The following is a special video from the Moneyless Society's YouTube page. For those of you who don't know, Moneyless Society is an organization that advocates for systemic change beyond the unsustainable and destructive cycles of capitalism to a sustainable society that works for the benefit of everyone. Moneyless Society is managed by Zachary Marlowe, Matt Holton, and Amanda Smith, and they've been working tirelessly around the clock, posting quality content, and I urge all of you to check out their channel and support their work. Now, me and Zach are still working on our documentary, and I promise it's going to be super top-notch, and we're hoping to get it posted by sometime next year. We still don't have a name for our movie, but it's going to be a very interesting, stylistically unique presentation of not only criticizing the many, many flaws of capitalism, but also presenting a vision of what the future can be. And I promise you, you're not going to be disappointed. So please stay patient. We are working hard to make the best, highest quality documentary that we can actually produce. And it's going to feature a lot of special, special guests. So anyway, without further ado, here's the video titled, Build the Change. The old world is ending. And we have the opportunity to rethink everything. This is a show about the systemic problems in our world. And the real solutions we have today. To transition from an apocalyptic storm of war, scarcity, and ecological collapse. To create an abundantly advanced collaborative society. That sustains all life. You may think it's an impossible dream. But the alternative is an inevitable nightmare. We're your hosts, Matt Holton. Amanda Smith. And Zachary Marlowe. And together, we can move past this economic absurdity and come together to actualize our collective potential to create something completely new. We are Mindless Society. Moneyless Society is a nonprofit and volunteer organization. Everything we've built up so far has come out of our own blood, sweat, and tears, and from the support of our patrons. A very special thanks to Alex, our first patron who supported us and believed in us from the start. Money only has value because we believe in it. So if enough of us believe in something new, it will become reality. Yeah, watch out for the hornets. Coming back in to us, so, okay. All right. Stay out um, of the corner. Oh, Matt, perfect. you can start us off here. Um, what is Moneyless Society? What is Moneyless Society? So, I guess at this point, it's a lot of different things. It's evolved, right? It's it started out. It's yeah, it's evolved, continuing to evolve. It started out as a website um, that I made about eight years ago, then sat on it for a long time after writing a few articles. Then after COVID, uh, you know, happened, it's evolved into. Uh, you know, a group. We obviously we have the Facebook page, um, but then it evolved into a podcast and you know other Facebook group. And now we're starting projects, right? IRL. <laughs> so it's evolving. I mean, eventually our goal is to build you know self-sustaining communities that don't need money, right? To where we can provide everything we need on our own. Uh, essentially, hope you know a lot of it within the community. But what we can't provide for ourselves within the community, we you know would like to provide through mutual aid agreements. You know, collaborative agreements we can find with other people, with other groups and organizations. So that's the society part of Moneyless Society. It's like mm -hmm. you can't do it on your own. If we did exactly. this on our own, and it was perfectly self self sustaining, circular community in a closed loop system that used all of its waste and turned it into energy and all that stuff. It wouldn't matter. It doesn't matter. The world's still going to die. You know. <laughs> so we need to. Uh, expand outwardly and find other people, find the others and connect and right. form a real network of communities mm -hmm. that uh, ultimately will encircle the earth and you know uh, these communities can broaden outward and scale up and you know form into a new society, a new social system because it mm -hmm. has to be a systemic change not just uh, you know one person finding their own little you know utopia. Absolutely. If my only society is anything it's it's an effort to remind people of what it is to be humane and to remind people that we can thrive. We don't have to just survive. 
that we already have all those things that we need to thrive at our fingertips and to educate the, the greater public on, on just how to do that as foreign as a, of a concept as that is because we should know by now how to just eat and live. <laughs> but it's been convoluted. <laughs> Are you trying to, to catch the cat I'll again? I'll try to catch the cat, okay. <laughs> I, was, I was trying to, uh, you The know, cat with no tail? Interact <laughs> with my environment. I love him. I want his love. Oh, sorry, sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Again. It's fine. <laughs> sorry. You're sorry. just, you're being human. You're trying to interact with your that environment instead of kill it. <laughs> Yes. So, man, what were you saying? Uh, I was just saying how if Moneyless Society is anything, it is a group effort to unindoctrinate the masses so that we remember from where we came yeah. and where we should be headed. Mm, absolutely. I like that. Where are we heading? Where are we well, heading? certain disaster if we don't get our shit together. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, absolutely. Yeah, pretty much, right? Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, the consequences of us not changing everything are absolutely fucking dire unimaginably horrific and horrendous as terrible as it is and it's really sad to me that every single day people watch the news oh uh, uh the U u.s supreme court said it's cool that the nested corporation uses slaves because they're not on u.s soil you know or like uh you know because it's okay to uh, exploit a third world country they I must mean, not be as human as us it, just the fact that that every single day things get nastier and people are just like oh, all right guess that's life and they're mm. just like like holding your hand in a pot of boiling water you know, you're not really gonna feel it until it's boiling, and then you're, oh my God, that's boiling, you know? But that's that's what it is every single day, getting worse and worse and worse. And so many people can't zoom out and see how it's all connected. They can't see that there's a, a common driver here, that it's all economic, and oh, economics, that sounds so boring. I don't wanna deal with that. Or oh, what's, is, what's what, economics got to do with it? You know, it's power, it's everything. money, it's all these, you know? It's the crumbling foundation of the society we live in. It's already served its purpose. It's time to move on and use what we have and carry forward into the future rather than death for the planet and for humanity. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. you summed it up pretty well. I have a habit of doing that. <laughs> I, I, I hate redundancy. It's my pet peeve. How many eons do we have to talk about this? <laughs> we don't have any left, actually. We don't have yeah. any eons left. We're, we can't talk anymore. We have to walk it or else. And on the other side of that, though, there is uh, a, a new form of life that is better, you know, and it, like even getting back to the earth. I mean, we walked through this beautiful property today and, and you know, it was a perfect fusion of, of, you know, the old and the new, you know, where there's mm -hmm. beautiful ancient farmhouses. But, you know, people and people are using, uh, you know, indigenous, you know, permacultural techniques. And we can maintain these natural values mm -hmm. that are based on community and on health and on wellness and on the earth on ecological balance, uh, but also move forward and use, you know, renewable energy and, you know, automation and, you know, new forms of like 3D printing and new materials and, you know, and networking with people all over the world. I mean, that's what Moneyless Society is to me. That's so exciting that we have members and people that engage with us all over the world. We've, our podcast has been downloaded in what, uh, like 20? 21 different countries as of two weeks ago. So that's amazing that the seeds of this are everywhere because the need is the same. Mm. And we need to unify in terms of a solution, in terms of a worldview. So, um, Matt, what is that, what is that worldview? What is the, what does late stage moneyless society look like? Versus late stage capitalism. Yeah, right. It's a lot different. That's for sure. You know, I mean, essentially we've probably scaled back a lot of production and consumerism to a small percentage of what it is now. However, our quality of life is exponentially better because we're not in this rat race. We've learned to use our you know, resources uh, sustainably. We've learned to respect our environment. We've learned to create beautiful things uh, synergistically that not only help ourselves, but heal the planet and heal the damage that we've done. Perpetually you know? regenerative. Right, exactly. Perpetually regenerative and, and also providing more for everyone. We want everyone to have equal access to everything that they should and could have. We don't like this tiered system that we have now where, you know, just because you were born in the wrong country, it means you can't go to school, right? Or it means that you don't have access to clean water. 
you know, the right? basics, the very basics, right. the things that are so easily preventable. You exactly. Know? And that is that is real violence that's being done, and it's intentional. Mm. It's it's saying these are our priorities. We have the power to turn our world into anything we can imagine right now. Really, we can transform it into anything we can imagine. We have automation and nano machines and quantum computers and all of this incredible technology, and it's being used to blow people up. <laughs> it's being used to shoot people. It's being used to make crank out endless iterations of the same product in these this sort of curtailed, you know, super incremental form of improvement and advancement that's planned obsolescence baked into it. it I mean, it's, it's used to engineer scarcity so that people mm -hmm. have to uh, pay or die. Right. Well, right. that's the, yeah. That's it. That's the key shift is mm -hmm. the mentality of we have the yeah. scarcity mentality. And if people are emotionally secure and they have to buy things to fill that void, then all the better. That's how our capitalist system works. It's yeah. consumerism on steroids, and it's just going to get worse <laughs> and worse and worse until until the whole system just collapses essentially. And we're headed there at we're breakneck the speed. We're, we're absolutely the headed there brink. at breakneck speed, and people don't believe it, but. You know, we'll no, see. No, they don't believe it. Look at where it ranks on the Twitter <laughs> trending search thing. It's <laughs> fourth below movie. Garfield has wow. a new movie coming out. By the way, we might not get to see it because climate change is a thing. It's a thing and it's happening, like he said, at breakneck speed. Yeah, I mean, it makes it all okay. we are in a severe cultural lag. And I, even people who consider themselves radical or people who consider themselves progressive, they're not aligned with what we can actually do. And they think that a lot of people think that going forward means we have to go backward and you know become luddites and you know get rid of all of our technology and not use technology and you know just go back to uh, you know churning butter the old-fashioned way <laughs> but it's it's not that at all I mean it's it's honestly we it's it's more resource intensive to keep people in slums it's more resource intensive to keep mm -hmm. people hungry right. to feed this endless crazy cyclical consumption and the globalization that's war sustained. machine and everything else that's all of that's needed to, to keep these this bullshit way of life going Absolutely. To keep it's bullshit it's chaotic it's unintentional and 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 we're reaping what we've sown destruction <laughs> yeah. absolutely unnecessary. unnecessary just because it's been this way for centuries doesn't mean that's the way it's supposed to be. Right. It's and almost it, a cliche argument at this point, but it's not natural. Capitalism is not how we were brought into this world, but it's going to be the way we go out if we don't drop it and move on and, and evolve. Mm -hmm. We're humans. Yeah. We're supposed to evolve. That's what yeah. we've been doing for for eons and now. I think, well, something, something, why do, uh, why some, do people think we're not supposed to anymore? I'm sorry. Well, and I think something a lot of people don't understand too is we mm. chose, I mean, not necessarily we, like you and me and our generation and everything, but our ancestors hundreds of years ago chose this. They chose chose to do this. It was a choice. It wasn't something that just, you know, manifested. No God said, you know, this is what you shall do. Right. And, and, and I mean, essentially, they were operating off of, you know, systemic consequences. One thing happened and another thing happened. But this is where what happened because certain things transpired, you know, uh, thing, things like the enclosures in England, you know, uh, after the medieval period and whatnot, you know, to, to solidify land ownership where they kicked all the peasants off the land and things like that, uh, you know, and then the industrial revolution, all those peasants needed work, right? So now we put them to work in factories and now we have the industrialization of our society and then it evolves from there and one thing comes to another and comes to another, but these, these were choices that people made and we have a choice to do things differently now. Now, we can say we don't want to participate in this system anymore because it sucks and we are going to build something new and we are going to remove ourselves from this system and we are going to create something better. We're going to show you what it is and we're going to invite you to participate. I have an analogy, abusive relationships. We keep walking back through the door. We keep returning to our abuser, our oppressor. There's nothing holding us back from walking out the door and not looking back. You know, like, we just need to move forward. It's that simple. It's so simple, it's ridiculous. People can say I'm oversimplifying it, but I'm not. We have a choice. Why aren't we making the right one? Why? One good reason. Justify why money's more important than life. Why wealth is more important than happiness. Why clout and status quo is more important than health. Some, somebody give me a solid answer to any of those questions. I mean, I mean, there there's just comes a time where you know that you're you're going in the wrong direction and, and you see the one you should go in and, and you take that direction. Yeah. yeah, it gets tiresome having to vindicate your, your core beliefs when you realize like, oh, the problem is money. Money is made up. It's a fanciful notion, you know, that this whole system is based on an abstraction and is mm -hmm. perpetuated based on an abstraction right. and that our political system is nonsense and it's yeah. actually all theater and all of these things it's just like everything that we engage with and we pour our energy into just isn't real 
that there's not a substance to it, that we exist in this projection of what we think the world is. And that, to get back to that scarcity mentality that we think things have to be this way when they don't. We think we have to use an archaic political system with filibusters and you know exactly. paper ballots and all these things. When we have technology, yeah. we have social technology, we have social networks, right. we use them every single day. We have machine learning that helps optimize us. We met on the internet. This is the first time we've ever encountered each other in the physical flesh. Nice to meet you, by the way. Yeah, yeah nice, nice to nice meet you guys too. Yeah. <laughs> in person. I actually don't, I don't think it's working out. Um, it was, yeah. the podcasting was fun. Not uh, making enough money, just, no, no, no. Uh, I just don't like you guys, so sorry. Apart, I thought I did, uh, I just, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I just. I'm I'm not feeling it. That's you know, funny. I'm, I'm just gonna. Well, I think. I think. So. <laughs> I, I'm taking your camera with me, though. It's a nice camera. I like it. <laughs> Babe, I, I think one of the most important things we can do is to show people what's possible. You know, show people the alternatives that are out there because people don't know. Or one they're of the, scared by them. Yeah, and, and, and they're afraid, and rightfully so, you know, because socialism has a horrible connotation to it, so does communism, and anytime we start talking about anything like this, that's exactly where the conversation goes. <laughs> ooh, it's like, ooh, oh, ooh. you know, oh, well, now you're a socialist, you're a communist. I can't tell you how many heated arguments I've had about this, too. And, and it's just like, we're not socialists or communists. There's we, no ism attached to what we're trying to accomplish. We're freaking realists, okay? Realists, <laughs> We yes. are here. We are, we are looking at what is yeah. happening in the world and examining the facts and being realistic. We're not putting our fucking heads in the sand to, you know, just ignore what is going on in this planet. We are here and we are actively creating solutions and we are participating in moving forward in this process and we want other people to help us with this. We want to show other people what is possible. And I mean, one of the questions I get asked all the time is, how would it work? You know, what incentives is there? You know, how would these mechanisms, people assume that we're gonna be bartering, like trading chickens for rice, you know, or <laughs> things like that. It does not have to be that way. We are a technologically advanced society. We can automate damn near everything that we wanted to at this point. And there are multiple alternatives uh, for resource distribution, you know, production, for transportation, for manufacturing, for... Recycling I mean, and, rec and design. I mean, you name it. Participatory economics for and agriculture, participatory design. For, yeah, exactly. Particip and more, more participation, um, you know, feedback mechanisms that, that allow the end user to directly participate in the production of goods and services and things like that. Not this absolute chaotic production that capitalism produces where you produce way too much of one thing and not enough of another. And, and then who knows answer. who the fuck gets everything. And then you have milk being dumped in fields, <laughs> right? When COVID's happening and shit like that, you build way too many houses, right? In Southern that California. Can live in. Yeah, and, and, and then and then, but wait, there's not enough affordable housing. You know, uh, so we didn't do that right either. And, oh, oh wait, but it's just a bunch of capitalists trying to make a bunch of fucking money everywhere. And the whole system is just utter, absolute chaos. But, oh yeah, it's the invisible hand that makes it all work. Well, is it working? Is it fucking working? It's not working. <laughs> it's working for this many people. Hell yes. <laughs> I gotta back up and make a comment. You said people are, uh, oh, people are putting their head in the sand and ignoring what's going on. I want to tell you why. Because we have been indoctrinated to believe that we need to be governed, that we cannot make such choices. But the irony is that somehow, even though we think that people can't make choices for themselves, there are some anomaly uh, group of people out there that can make the choices for us, which has removed our creative agency and our confidence to step forward and do what's necessary. We're waiting on somebody else to tell us it's okay or how to do it or when to do it. That's not going to happen because the power structure is in place don't want it to change. They will ride the earth into the sun, as Marlo often says. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, blazing fury, as long as they're on top of the pyramid the whole way, as long as they have what they want and the wealth is concentrated into their hands. We, we can't wait any longer for anyone to come along and save us. Philanthropists aren't going to do it. Musk isn't going to do it. Bezos isn't going to do it. The Rothschilds aren't going to do it. Nobody, it's... Government's not going to do it. It's a scam. Mm. Yeah, Charity it's, yeah. is a scam. <laughs> keep going, keep going. Keep going. <laughs> like I said, philanthropy is a scam. Uh. I'm just, I could rant all day, obviously. But just stop waiting on people to say it's okay. Stop waiting on some divine sign to signal 
you for? Well, you, you think the sky turning red is not enough of a, of a divine sign? That's you think, really? You think the ocean being it's on fire divine. isn't enough of a divine you, sign that, that we need to make a fundamental ocean pattern disruption and right. change what we're doing? That's, seriously. That's this a big thing. sign. Here's a good, good point, right? A serious question. <laughs> to anybody watching this who's skeptical, do you want a ruler? Do you need to be ruled? Do you need to be managed? Do you need to be uh, owned, basically? You know? Do you need a boss? Would people just not work if they didn't have a boss? Why, why do we have this understanding that is so baked into it at this level that the masses can't be controlled? Well, educate them, then they don't need control. I mean, give them access to what they need. They don't need control. Allow, create a culture that fosters actual individual development, personal development, health, wellness, creativity, that inspires innovation, that doesn't treat people who are different like they're freaks, you know? that doesn't treat anybody who has a different idea of how things should be like they're some insane leper. person or a leper or a communist. Oh God, communism! Oh God! Oh God. <laughs> Run down their way! You know, um, it, we, don't, yeah. we don't need this, uh, this arrangement. We, we never did. And, and the majority of our history uh, worked without it, worked really well. We, we lived happy lives. We were adapted to our environment for over 100,000 years. Humans didn't just uh, fart and die into, and fall into the ocean and wither away, you know? We lived for a long time. And that's not to say, oh, we're, we need to go back to being hunter-gatherers, but we can go back to what we know scientifically and just essentially and just obviously what works on a human level, on a human societal level that we are social beings and we live in an antisocial society that is based on the fundamental principle that if you do what's good for you, it will magically, through the use of the invisible hand, <laughs> trickle down and make everybody's lives better. That's not true. It's not scientific. It's just obviously insane. The reason that we live in chaos and destruction today is because we severed the umbilical cord that uh, to what feeds us, to what gives us life, mm. to what guides us inherently, innately, and organically. And, and that's to know ourself, our relationship with ourself, which as I am always saying, is, um, is to know nature. Again, not to say that it's, it's separate from us, but since that's the label that we're working with, um, we're part of it. We, we are we're, part of it. It's, it's part of us. We're all made of the same elements. Right? That's scientifically proven. So I, I, I don't understand why people are like, that's a tree and this is me and we're right? completely separate and different. And I can just take what I want from that tree and it won't matter. Because you came from nature and one day you will return yeah. to it. Feral. <laughs> they're, they're wild and free and feral as, as everyone should be. No, 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 no. <laughs> These will be the outtakes. <laughs> hey, beautiful. Today's sponsor is the Bezos Earth Fund. <laughs> <laughs> Moneyless Society sponsors are In Northrop Grumman, with Elon Elon Musk. BlackRock, yeah. Blackwater, <laughs> the Pentagon, <laughs> the Pentagon, and you guessed it, the Illuminati. <laughs> Trying to unify the world in one Trump, world government. Trump loves and billions and billions and billions and billions. He's our angel investor. Okay, bring it, bring it on home. What's the, what's the, uh, what, basically, what are we trying to create here, and what do we need the folks back home participation within that to do? I always like to end with a question. Um, what's more intimidating, searching yourself to find out why you're not doing something about it, or letting it happen when it comes to climate change and the end of the world and humanity? It's a good question. Mm. Can you follow that? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I was going to say, Matt, you know, just to basically tell us, sure. help you tell the folks back home what we're trying to create here, specifically in the plan that we're trying to make, yeah. what we're trying to build, and how the, the, the podcast and the show and the group and the Facebook and all of that stuff basically is, you know, the first stage of that, of, of gaining attention, of gaining uh, participation through as many people as we can get to build something real. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> So thanks for well, what I, mean, are we trying to do? I mean, essentially, this is the first stage of, I mean, what we want to evolve into a moneyless society or a network of moneyless communities, uh, self-sustaining communities uh, based on regenerative agriculture, um, sound, sustainable principles, uh, technological development, cooperation, uh, you know, cooperatives, you know, collaboration, mutual aid agreements, you know, and just providing abundance, creating a post-scarcity society, economy, communities, whatever you want to call it. You know, this is this is the fundamental stages to people coming together, working together, finding each other, and creating something better. 
you know, what exactly that better thing is and looks like right now, we're not too sure. There's people out there who have blueprints and designs, such as the Venus Project, there's Jay Sable, and we want to work Global. with them all. Yeah, absolutely. This we want to collaborate with all films. of them. Exactly. The more people that can help us with this, the more people we can help with their projects, the better. We don't want to be an island with this. We want help. We want your support. We need your support. There's no way that we can do all of this alone. It will take by a ourselves. village. Yeah, it takes a village, it takes a community, it takes... Well, everyone at this point. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it, exactly. I had this realization uh, a year or so ago that we don't just need a revolution of like some big, you know, the big violence where we flip over the table and, you know, everything is great immediately. Is mm. it, that's just going to create more chaotic feedback loops and repressed, repressed you know, victimization and oppression mm -hmm. and all these things. We need a revolution of everything. We need all, we don't need everybody to stop what they're doing and, uh, you know, go pick it and make cheesy slogans and signs and yell. We need, you know, people to find what, what it is that they're in this world to do. We need people to find their communal role. What are you in this world to do? You know, what is your trade? What is your skill? What, you know, what, what do you love to do? You know, do it for the revolution. Do it for the new world. Build the new world. Build an alternative economic system and an economic society where everybody, all roles are filled. We have artists. We need artists, painters, graphic designers, coders, you know, uh, manufacturers. Mm -hmm. We need roboticists. We need biologists. We need farmers and growers and permaculturalists. We need people of everything you can imagine. Cooks. We need everything. We need a whole society of people. And we can just kind of create this whole society that's based on you know, real principles of sustainability, of community, of fun, of the adventure of making something new, of doing something different, of trying something new and realizing there are way more people that want this than don't. There are way more people who trudge through a life that they hate every single day. Gallup poll, 85% of people hate their jobs. Most people don't like where they live. Most people don't like breathing toxic air and eating poison food. Most people don't like having uh, ineffectual, petulant, sniveling politicians telling them what they can and can't do. Most people don't like watching, you know, uh, our culture obsess over celebrities and nonsense and just de destroy itself intentionally. Most people want to create. And yeah. that's what we want to, we want to create. The fundamental uh, basis of that is community, is to create communities, to find the others, you know, I'll find the others, find the other people who believe this. Mm. But don't think it's just some ludicrous dream. I'm so <laughs> glad that I found you guys. Come here, group hug, look at right? it. I'm so hug. glad we finally came together. And that's the first step, and now it's your turn. Right? It's the three of us, we're waiting for you. We're just now at the start of something that has no limits to growth. Our only limitations are participation and imagination. What we can see, what we can envision, and the people that we can bring together to make it happen. We have to accept that they are not coming for us. We have to make our own change. We have to build our own society. We have to make our own movements, learn how to grow our own food, create our own little worlds, and connect them. And that might sound scary. That might sound like a lot of work. You know your life is bringing you nothing but pain. You know that this trajectory is only going to end in destruction. Are you going to choose to live in acceptable misery, or are you going to choose the uncertain, the adventure, to take back our lives? One piece at a time. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for being patient and thank you for supporting my work. I'm going to be posting a lot more videos in the future. I literally have hundreds of video ideas written down that I will hope to post as soon as I get the chance. Peace out and have a great day. Bye.